107.5 WBLS. What's up? Just Nick here with the beautiful, beautiful Eva Marcel. How are you? I am blessed, highly favored, sitting next to your beautiful self. Thank you so much Thanks for coming. For having it's good me. to see you. I mean, we could talk about all your major accomplishments. You're a phenomenal actress. Thank you. Beautiful model. Thank but you. But we're here to discuss this movie that I was yes. just telling her off camera I saw. It's called Buried Alive and Survived. Yes. Girl, okay, because we can't spill too much, right? But I will say that you played that role to the T. It's very scary to see um, that it was based on real life stories. Yes, that's what's so amazing about the story. It's not just that it's like a gripping movie, right? Yeah. It's actually ripped from the headlines. And so Lifetime is doing this amazing thing where they're taking real life stories inspired by real life stories and turning them into movies. And it's one thing to come up with like this really cool idea, but it's another thing to realize that someone actually like lived this. This is not Harry Potter. This yeah. is not like, let's make up some stuff. Someone actually lived this life. A woman was actually buried alive mm. by her husband and had to figure out how to survive. Did you take that in when you were preparing for your role? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. How did you prepare? Usually when I prepare for a role, um, it's a lot of fun. I go back and forth and try to figure out who this woman is. But this role was different because this woman was already established. She mm. is a woman that exists. So my job was to bring her story to light, to be a storyteller and to let the rest of the world know what she went through. And then also shed light on what other people go through that no one would ever know. And so though it, the topic and the subject matter is something that is like jarring, mm -hmm. it is real. Women are dealing and men are dealing with domestic violence every single day. And the will to survive lies in your child, in your mom, in your faith, in whatever yes. that is. And so in this film, Alicia was trying to figure out how to just protect her son from her ex-husband who she fell in love with at a young age. And then, as people do, men and women, they change. Mm -hmm. He ended up being an absolute psycho, going to jail, and then he got out of jail early, unbeknownst to her. So right. she's like living a low key life, and then out of nowhere, here is the terror of her life right. back. And out when of you think about the fact that that situation is real to a lot of people and people having to relocate, change their name, find aliases, yes. and that there's children involved yes. is always a heart jerker because, you know, they can't make friends at school. And then obviously the tension between the family dynamics of just not having the father around. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to keep the family around just for the sake of having two parents the in unit, the household. Yeah. To what it looks like. Yeah. But you know, the question is what does it do to your child? Yeah. You know? And if when you watch the film you'll see why Alicia needed to protect Malcolm from Victor. Victor is my ex husband or my he actually legally is my, my still my husband. I just decided to run away from him. Right. And change my name. And to your point, I don't really have any friends because I can't because I can't open up my ability to be vulnerable mm. It doesn't exist. I am always on guard. You know, Alicia is a helicopter mom, like, wants to know where her son is at mm. all time. Answer your phone, text me back within minutes, you know? And just having that kind of fear, no one wants to live that kind of life. Right. No one deserves to live that kind of life. But you walk past people every single day, and that is their reality. Yes. It's so sad. There's a lot of overprotective moms out there. So, are you, would you consider yourself an overprotective mom? I am. I'm an overprotective mom, but I'm an overprotective mom that is raising my that are raising my kids with love and consideration. So while I'm protective and want to make sure that, you know, they're protected from this world, I also want to let them enjoy life. You know, enjoy the beauty of what our ancestors fought so hard for, yeah. for what mom and dad worked so hard for. And when it comes to my kids, I do not play. So when filming this, Malcolm, for me, was my daughter. Mm. I turned my son, who was 14, into my 10-year-old daughter, and I just replaced it. And I used that in a lot of method because I have going through domestic violence myself. Mm. I used a lot of that in this to find her real emotion and where she really was. And it was a dark place. 
For sure. Your your children are beautiful, by the way. Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. But thank you for opening up and sharing about your story with mm -hmm. domestic violence. So someone could be watching right now. I know people who are mm -hmm. in situations like that, and they just don't know how to leave. What advice would you give them on leaving? Oh, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. It's hard to answer because there's so much shame in it. So mm -hmm. with leaving, you have to explain to everybody else around you what you have been hiding mm. all this time. For myself, I hid it from my family, my brothers, my best friends, everybody. So the decision to leave impacts so many people. But for me, it was my daughter. I didn't care what the headline said. I didn't care what people said about me. I didn't respond to what people had to say about me. I had a two-month-old daughter to protect, and that is all that matters. And so like Alicia, she doesn't want this reality. In her perfect world, she would be with Victor. Victor would get his act right, Malcolm would have his daddy, and we would have our family. But we don't live in that world. Right. Thank you, Adam and Eve. We live in this carnal world of <laughs> sin where things don't go perfectly. That's not the utopia we live in. Right. And so my job is to give my kid the best utopia I can which is to be a mom, to show up, to be there, to love on him, to provide for him. Um, but she does it in a way that is so protective, he just doesn't understand. Yeah. And as a mother, you don't want to take your child's innocence away. You don't want to taint their idea of their other parent. And, but by the same token, they need to understand... The severity of everything. Exactly. And so it's a balance of like, how do you tell your child? When do you tell your child? I didn't expect, Alicia in the, in the movie didn't expect that he would be out anytime soon. So she didn't need to explain. Right. And was waiting for you know her son Malcolm to get a little bit older so that he can better understand what's going on because he knows life more because he's right. a more mature young man. But she didn't have that luxury. Mm. And it's hard because, I mean, imagine growing up without a parent and always longing for them. And then one day they show up at your doorstep. Yeah. What do you do? And you can see that in the film, the confusion of you not knowing how to act around the child, the child being excited to see the father or a strange parent. It's, yeah, it's a phenomenal film. And people change, right? Yeah. And life people change, sometimes for good and sometimes for bad. And you want to believe that the person that you love so dearly yeah, has changed. changed for the good. And so there is a piece of her, and I know it because I hold it inside of me, that I just, I, just, I just pray for him to be a better man. Though I know in my heart, he's the same man. Mm. And so it's so difficult. Yeah. And you see that in, in this film, that tug of war with Alicia and what she needs to do for survival what she wants to do for her son, yes. for, for everything, and even for Victor. Because at the end of the day, she loved this man. And I think she still loves this man. She's no longer in love with him, mm. though. And that's hard. Yeah. I can tell that you really had to dig deep because it, it looked like it was really happening to you. Was there parts or moments where you felt triggered? Oh, for sure on the set? Like, did you have to like take a break? Did oh, it feel for sure. too familiar? And how for was that? Sure. There was one scene I remember um, filming and it was so reminiscent of one of the exact experiences mm. I had years ago. Like by the front door, it was a wooden door. It was in the corner. It was like the exact experience that I had. And I remember filming it, and the director's like, yeah, so we're going to shoot it in here, and it's going to come through the door. And, and in my mind, I was like, oh, my God, this is exactly what happened. And the way the script was written, it wasn't written that way, mm -hmm. but that's how we shot it. And it was very triggering because it was like looking into the eyes of my ex. And it was feeling that sense of fear, the need to figure out how to find the courage, but being absolutely terrified. Like, like not a shark in the water terrified. I don't even know how to explain the level of terror, mm. the level of fear. Right. It takes the wind out of you. It takes the strength out of your knees. Like mm. you literally crumble. Mm. And I felt so many times Alicia crumble to where when I was done filming, I remember 
it took me a minute to get out of her because she was I was still in that shell right I was still like tiptoeing around I had a friend ask me like are you okay because you I mean like are you sure you're good yeah and I realized I'm, I'm actually fine I'm living in this character still I have to get out of her but I I dove into her a lot yes you did yes you also did something that I could never do because I'm a little bit claustrophobic <gasps> and you were buried alive so how was that, and how long were you in the, the so-called coffin? <laughs> exactly. So I remember reading the script, and I, I read it, and the whole story in and of itself, I'm like, yes, I want to represent this. I want to tell this story. Right. I can do this box. It's just a box. It's camera. You know how this goes. We can cut. When I got in that box, it was so real. Mm. Obviously, it was safe, so there were ways for me to escape. But I'm not Eva anymore. Eva's left at home or in the dressing room. I am Alicia, and I am in this box, and I can't get out, and I am bound, and I am hopeless. What do you do? And I have my director screaming on the outside, you'll never get out, you'll never see your son again, you'll never see your son again. And I just freaked out. Because the idea of never seeing my children again, I can't even imagine. Yeah. I, cannot, I cannot fathom. I will go without every limb before any of them. So I definitely took that in. I can't believe I did 19 interviews and didn't cry. I never, I couldn't imagine. So it became real for me, very real. And you'll see it in the film. Yes, a phenomenal film at that. Thank you. Good interview, girl. I didn't cry. No, no. <laughs> Two days. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, though. But I, I understand that, and it's very symbolic. And I think something that people should be paying attention to, especially if they're dealing with domestic violence, is fast forwarding to what happens when you know the person takes it too far. Yeah. And you could lose your life. Yeah. And your kids living without you. You know that needs to set in, and it has to be real for some people because. You know, they think, well, never I'm think, okay. He never yeah. thinks you. No, and you never in my wildest dreams that I think my life would be my life. Yeah. Good, bad, and indifferent, all the blessings, testimonies, everything. But I never thought me. So when you find yourself in that moment, you're like, whoa, right. how did I get here? Especially if you're one of those people that are like in control and, you know, know what you want or on top of things, type A. That's me. I am a very assertive girl. But... There's something that happens when you fall in love with a man. Mm. All of that washes away. And a lot of that facade goes and the vulnerable little girl in you that mm. needed to be loved is mm. there. And so the allowance you give a man ends up being way beyond what they deserve, way beyond what you deserve, and then it finds you in toxicity and in harm. Definitely. I have people or friends who've been in this situation and they feel a lot of shame, so much. as you mentioned before, um, and not necessarily in just saying it to their family, because of course they're ashamed of that, but they're ashamed of themselves yeah. for allowing the that, shame. for allowing it to happen. And then it makes you want to dig deep to see, well, you know, well, why would they invite that kind of love in? Do you remember what it was that you felt like they gave you that kept you there? Did you feel safe in I a think, weird way? I think a lot of times when you fall in love, you fall in like, then in love, Yes. then you get to know them. So mm. you already liked him, now you love him, down to everything about him, and then the flaws start coming out. And he's human. Right. So because you love him, you're like, it's okay, I can help that. I can fix that. You know what I mean? It's going to be okay. I, I, I can do that. I know he didn't have this, so I'll be that for him. Mm. So you try to give him all the things that makes him deficient and makes him act that way, and all you're doing are aiding and abetting a monster. Mm. But you're doing it out of love, but it doesn't help. And then you lose yourself in it because you're feeding and you're pouring mm -hmm. and you're pouring and you're pouring, and now your cup is empty, yep. you empty, he's crazy. You're scared, right? and now what do you do? And the reason that I felt like this film needed to be made and, and I was okay taking the role was because I'm over the shame. It was not my fault. That's right. So. 
I love that. And it's not your fault. It's not. Watching, it's not your it's fault. Not. I love it. I love it. Let's talk about Tyler LaPlay because... Oh my God, Tyler LaPlay. He scared me. He was so good. <laughs> he... Okay, so Tyler is such an amazing actor because he is a father. He is so gentle, even though like he's this big buff guy. He's so gentle. He's so sweet. But when he got into this character, I was like, oh, I know why you're casted now. He was so amazingly terrifying. Like, I haven't responded to his ex. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, no, shout out to Tyler. He dug deep and tapped into something, um, something so dark that I think all of us have in us somewhere. I remember Leonardo DiCaprio doing an interview talking about um, making the movie Django. Yes. And they were like, how are you so great at being so bad? And he said he went to therapy afterward because he didn't understand where that evil came from inside of him. Oh, wow. Like, how does that live in, there is something in all of us, good and bad. And so it's about what we decide to feed every day. Mm. Do you feed the beast mm. or do you feed the royal in you, the king in you, the queen in you, or that devil that wants to rob you of your royalty? Mm. And so he tapped into, obviously, the beast, but, the beast. But I know him as the king. That's who I know Tyler as. He is an amazing actor. He's an amazing man. He's a father. I remember shooting with him and seeing him that with the guy that played our son. His name is Jaden White. He did a great job. His phenomenal well. job. Yes. First film. Really? First film. I couldn't tell. He was so amazing. Wow. But the way he interacted with him and the way he comforted him and the way he made him feel the way he deserved to be loved on that set and attended to on that set and the the gems that he gave him it was just it was so beautiful to watch yes and yes. how can people watch it oh uh, well you watch it on saturday september 21st on lifetime it's um i mean i think it's going to be one of the most amazing of the series but it's from the rip from the headline series mm -hmm. lifetime um don't miss it it's so good it's so good i would watch it again yes and I am really picky about watching movies, but Lifetime just sucks you in, It man. does, and it's buried alive, but survived. It's a, it's a whole other thing. Awesome. Lifetime is, has eleva even elevated even higher than where they were before. And what makes me excited about this series is that it follows a series that they had before, which were the untold stories of missing black girls. Mm. And so shout out to Lifetime for their responsibility, social responsibility, and their creative responsibility when telling stories. Tell all of our stories. Mm. And yes. I love that they're telling a story. Yes, and you told the story very well. Thank so you. So kudos to you, kudos Thank to you. you. Is there a role that you haven't done yet that you're looking to do? Because we've seen different sides of you. I definitely saw a different side watching this movie, but is there something like, you know, I really want to do this? Um, I would like to do sci-fi, and I would like to do like nice. more action. But I like mystery world. Like beating somebody up action? Oh, yes. Like Marvel. jumping over? Yes, yes, oh, wow. yes, I could see yes, it. yes. I want to do all that. I'm about to be 40. I got about 10 more years before these knees get to cracking. <laughs> it's my 40th birthday next month. So. Oh, happy early birthday. Thank you very much. It. Are you so, going to do something big? Because it's the big 4 oh. The big 40, yes. My best friend is taking me to Spain for yes. a birthday. So I'm excited. We're going to go party in Ibiza. I love it. Have mm -hmm. fun. Happy early birthday. Thank you. Go watch the film on Lifetime, Buried, Alive, and Survived. It's yes. so good. It's so good. Thank you all for watching, and thank you, Eva. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank and thanks for making me cry. Oh, I sorry. cannot believe that. No. Oh, my God. With a smoky eye. No, thank you. You're good. It still looks good, though. You're good. <laughs> thank you, sis. Thank you.